To understand acid-base disorder, first it's very important to understand the, the basics and normal physiology. As you know, the body keeps extracellular fluid pH at a very tight range of uh, 7.35 to 7.45. And what decides pH is the concentration of hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ion means acid. So if hydrogen ion goes up, that means pH will go down. And if hydrogen ions goes uh, down, that means pH will go up. The body keep hydrogen ion checked and in and, and, and balance by buffering that buffered by bicarb. So what bicarb does, it combine to the H plus, if you combine both, it will lead to H2CO3, which is the carbonic acid. And this is bicarbonic anhydrase will become CO2 plus H2O. CO2 will be washed out by our lungs. So that's how we buffer that out, which means that when the H plus the hydrogen ion goes up, the bicarb will go down. And here's the same thing. If the hydrogen ion goes down, the bicarb goes up. Let's stick it in our mind. They are inversely related. So every time we lose a hydrogen ion, that means we gain a bicarb. Every time we lose a bicarb, that means we gain a hydrogen ion. It's important to understand that the hydrogen concentration is decided by the ratio between partial pressure of carbon dioxide by the concentration of the bicarb in the extracellular fluid. This is 40 millimeter Hg normally, and this is 24 to 26 milli equivalent per liter normally, right? So you can see from this equation that the hydrogen ion and the bicarb are in inverse relationship and the hydrogen ion and PCO2 are in direct relationship. If one of them increase, the other one increase. The same thing when CO2 is increasing, that means it's not being washed out by the lungs, it will combine with H2O and form back the carbonic acid, which will cause acidosis. As all of you know, this being regulated by our lungs, and this is fast and quick to adapt within seconds to minutes, and this is regulated the bicarb by our kidneys, and this is slow, usually slow, I mean hours to days. Now, based on this, you know that when we get um, increase hydrogen ion, increase acidosis, that we try to breathe fast, get rid of CO2, and we try to increase bicarb, right, and vice versa. You understand that. Now, our body constantly producing acids. We every day produce 15, around 15,000 millimole of CO2 that needs to be washed out, otherwise it will form this acid. And we have fixed amount of hydrogen ion produced every day, around 50, I think one milli equivalent per kg, around 50 to 100 milli equivalent a day. And they call it fixed or non-volatile that cannot be turned or converted to CO2 cannot be converted to CO2 eventually and washed out. So it has to be got rid of by the kidney, okay? So for every 50 to 100 milli equivalent, we'll have a bicarb to balance this. That means we lose 50 to 100 milli equivalent of bicarb every day to counter the effect of this hydrogen ions. And that means if we do not regenerate that loss of bicarb, this bicarb concentration will fall and then will develop acidosis because we don't have enough bicarb to buffer the daily produced hydrogen ion. So how do we generate or regenerate that bicarb? Simply by our kidney will excrete or secrete, will get rid of the same amount here, 50 to 100 milli equivalent of hydrogen ion. And when we do that, by default, it, we said, and we'll show you in a second how, every loss of hydrogen ion means gain of the same of bicarb. So if we lose 50 to 100 milli equivalent of hydrogen, that means we gain 50 to 100 milli equivalent of bicarb. So that's how we keep our bicarb stores within normal level. So it's easy to understand how the lungs works because as we said, H2O, the H2CO3 is split into CO2 and H2O and there is chemoreceptors that sense the level of CO2 and then we breathe faster or slower to keep this level and sometimes actually to keep the pH, try to help keep the pH within normal limit, right? 
up till so, to a certain point all right how the kidney works then let me show you this okay this is the proximal tubules and this is a cell in the proximal tubule this is the lumen of the tubule and this is the basolateral membrane and this is the apical membrane okay i'm just going to focus on things that matter to us in clinical practice not all the details so if you don't know that most of the of the bicarb in the acf or almost all of it gets filtered through the glomerulus into the filtrate and it comes here to the proximal tubule and the body is very efficient basically absorb all that bicarb back and if it doesn't we'll have a problem will develop acidosis so there is a large amount of bicarb being filtered every day what happens here so the bicarb being filtered and it's here right now there is still some debate but most say that the bicarb cannot cross back to the cell on its own so what happened there is a transporter here that absorb in the proximal tubule sodium and secrete hydrogen and remember the proximal tubule is where all the glucose amino acid phosphorus sodium chloride water gets absorbed and then this hydrogen ion now will combine with the bicarb to form h2co3 and then through carbonic anhydrase this will become co2 plus h2 2O both can easily absorb back into the cell and then we'll have another H2CO3 carbonic acid then through another carbonic anhydrase this will become H plus that gets secreted again here and HCO3 that will be absorbed into the capillaries so that's how we move this bicarb here to here and this is a very efficient process because all the filtered bicarb will be reabsorbed back into the circulation to keep our bicarb concentration in that normal range so any problem with this process here as you can see if you have any problem with the absorption of bicarb first of all here we not gaining bicarb or losing hydrogen basically there is no net gain or loss so there is no effect on the bicarb concentration and no effects in ph basically we're just reabsorbing back the filtered bicarb so very important to understand so any problem with this process we just explained can lead to what we call type 2 rta which is a proximal tubular acidosis okay just remember that and if you have problem with the absorption of all these sodium glucose amino acid all these materials this is what we call fanconi syndrome another thing can happen or does happen very important in the proximal tubules is secretion or getting rid of hydrogen ion this will cause loss of hydrogen ion and gains of bicarb remember we said there is a 50 to 100 ml equivalent every day we lose of bicarb to buffer the hydrogen ion how do you replace that by secreting 50 to 100 of hydrogen ions and gain bicarb how is that there's it's, it's kind of complicated we're going to make it simple the glutamine here in these proximal tubules uh, split into two nh3 and two bicarb and i'm sim making it very simple it's much more complicated but it will take we'll, we'll do the purpose this will be gained back and here those will combine with 2h plus right this will form 2nh4 that will be screened the urine and goes out with the urine this is very important in getting rid of hydrogen ion if you have a problem here you will develop acidosis so that's one way to get rid of the hydrogen ion here there is another way in the distal tubules and collecting ducts where you actively pump that hydrogen ion into the tubules and make it simple the loss of hydrogen ion will produce bicarb that will get absorbed so that's how we absorb or regenerate or generate new bicarbs to compensate the for the loss um, of bicarb that if we use every day to buffer hydrogen ion so you don't have to know all the details but that gives you an idea of how things happen now a problem with this procedure or this mechanism here will lead to distal rta and we'll come to that just remember that